Hi, my name is Adam Eckerly, and today I'm going to show you how to use Rubrik to configure declarative SLA domains to protect your workloads. Before we get into the demo, I will talk briefly about Rubrik's declarative model and how it differs from the traditional backup job methodology. Then I'll walk you through configuring an SLA domain and the various options you'll have available to you. So let's take a look at the traditional imperative model of configuring backup jobs. These jobs can require tedious orchestration because each step needs to be carefully defined and executed. Failed jobs, or jobs that just take too long, can have a cascading effect across the system. Jobs can also require constant care and feeding as the applications, data, and infrastructure evolve. This is a bit like having a package shipped and having to define exactly where and when that package needs to move until it gets to its destination. While it's not terribly difficult to do for a single package, imagine doing that for the millions of packages that are shipped every day. Instead of defining each step that the package needs to take, what if we just said that the package needs to arrive at the destination in three business days? Then we let intelligent algorithms determine how to accomplish that goal. So in Rubrik, we define the desired level of protection, also called a service level agreement or SLA, using just a few simple inputs. This declarative policy, which we call an SLA domain, captures the recovery point objective, the recovery time objective, and the desired retention. The SLA domain can then be applied to all workload types that require this level of service, regardless of where they are in the infrastructure. Finally, the intelligence built into Rubik can then do all of the work behind the scenes to make sure your workloads are protected in such a way that your RPOs and RTOs are always met. Now let's jump into Rubrik and see how this works. So now we've transitioned over to the main Rubrik user interface. Let's head over here to SLA domains and click on local domains. Now I'll get to remote domains in a few minutes, but let's focus on local domains. Here you can see we have a few different policies that are already configured, but let's go in and create a new policy. The first thing we need is a name. We definitely recommend giving your SLA domains uh, descriptive names. In this particular demo, I'm just gonna use demo-ae. Now the next option is a toggle for continuous data protection. My colleague Rebecca goes into a deep dive in another video about our CDP solution, so I won't do that here. But you can use continuous data protection to protect certain types of workloads when you need a very granular recovery point objective. Uh, so if you need to be able to roll back to a specific second in time, you can use CDP to do that. For the purposes of this demo, I'm gonna leave it turned off. Next, we get into the core of our uh, SLA domain policy, the service level agreement. So you can see we have two columns take snapshots, which is effectively the RPO, and then keep snapshots, which is the retention policy. So if I have a workload that I wanna protect, and let's say that I want to take snapshots starting at every four hours, you can see that the retention column immediately lights up and says, hey, okay, you, you're gonna back up this workload, but you have to tell me how, for how long to keep the data. So in this case, I'm just gonna say, let's keep it for three days. And then I also want to do a daily backup that I want to keep for two weeks. I'm going to do a monthly backup that I'm going to keep for one year. And then I'm going to do a yearly backup that I'm going to keep for seven years. Now these are just example figures. Um, let's say that we have a workload that we just want to back up once a day and we don't want to do any kind of hourly backup. I can go in and I can definitely delete uh, that option. All of these fields are optional, you just need one set. So um, you can't leave it completely blank. You need to back it up at some point. Uh, and then you can see at the bottom that we have an effective retention. Uh, so this is gonna be the longest uh, of any of the values. And in this case, it's easy to see that it's seven years. Now, the bottom section is for a snapshot window. We think that you can back up at any given time throughout the day. But there are some maybe administrators or situations where you just need to have that control and maybe be ultra conservative with your snapshots. So we do allow you to define the snapshot window. Uh, but generally speaking, it's off by default and we don't think you should need it. 
Uh, we can also set a specific time to take the first snapshot when we apply the policy to an object. So let's say we have a new VM and we're assigning this policy to that virtual machine. Uh, by default, it's gonna take a snapshot immediately, the first opportunity. But we can set this to be a specific date and time if we need. So on this screen, we have archiving and replication. So you can see at the top, there is a slider that's grayed out. Uh, we cannot grab or move this. This is aligned and based on the previous screen where we have a retention or longest retention of seven years. That is the amount of data that's gonna remain in the cluster. But let's say that we wanna offload some of that cold data, you know, uh, off to somewhere else. It could be another storage system. It could be to a public cloud provider like an S3 bucket. So we can toggle archiving on, and then we can say everything older than one year, I wanna offload to the cloud. So we drag this slider over, and sometimes it's hard to get your specific date, so you can actually use the arrow keys to get your specific timeline, and boom. This will, once I pick an archival location and tell it where to archive, will send any data that's older than a year for this particular SLA domain off to the archival location that I choose. So uh, we've got a couple different buckets here. I'm just gonna choose S3 as this example. And um, we also have this idea of instant archive. Let's say that there's workloads that we just, you know, we don't wanna keep the data on the cluster. We wanna immediately ship that data out to this S3 bucket. We can enable instant archive. Just to note though, the latest copy of the snapshot does stay within the cluster locally until the SLA expires that snapshot. So for a short period of time, you do have data uh, in both places, even with Instant Archive. Then we also have replication. We can replicate these snapshots to a different cluster, let's say a DR site, or if we have other clusters at other geographic distributed locations, uh, we can do that. So um, we have uh, another cluster defined here as a replication partner, cluster A, and then we can use this slider to define um, how much data is gonna be kept on that remote cluster. So again, we'll use the slider and our arrow keys to fine tune that. So this means that we're going to replicate the snapshot data to cluster A, uh, and cluster A is going to keep that data for a year. So maybe on our DR site, right, we wanna keep more warm data. And actually, maybe we wanna keep, uh, you know, 120 days worth of data because that remote cluster, cluster A in this example, is also protecting data at its location. And so maybe we don't have a ton of, of spare capacity to devote as a replication target. So we can use a slider to fine tune. And these sliders, by the way, as I mentioned at the beginning, are based on the previous screen. So if we went back and decided, you know what, I only wanna keep these for these yearly backups for five years, then we go back, the slider adjusts, right? And so we can now only max uh, maximize this out to five years. So everything is dynamic in the UI, uh, it makes it really simple. And then of course, you know, we provide a summary screen for you to take a look at and verify that everything is as you want it to be. And then you just click create. And now we have our SLA domain that is ready to be assigned to uh, other workloads. So now let's check out this remote, remote domains tab really quickly. Um, here you can see we have one SLA domain policy showing up. Uh, this is because cluster A has this SLA domain policy that uses the cluster that we're currently viewing, cluster B, as a replication target. So this is really just a way to see uh, what uh, SLA domain policies are shipping data or replicating data to this particular cluster. So just to recap, we went over and compared Rubrik's declarative SLA domain model to the traditional uh, legacy imperative model where we have to define all the steps as part of the process. Whereas with rubric, we can, and as we saw in the demo, we can define the goal, uh, an RPO and retention 
and let the intelligence built into rubric take care of everything behind the scenes for us so that we're meeting those RPO and RTO goals. To find out more information about Rubrik's SLA domains or Rubrik in general, please visit rubric.com.